Rania, it's great to see you today. Great to see you too, you, and thanks for having me here. Oh, no, you're very welcome. In fact, you're the first visitor I've had at the Innovation Center, so really? it's kind of a double <laughs> celebration, I will say. So it's, it's a real thrill. Eh? Um, well, we're talking digital today, and um, I thought it'd be great as a, as a starter for you to be able to talk about um, adoption of digital technologies at your clinic, because I know you're a real pioneer in this, and I'd love to get your perspective on kind of where we are today and, and how you see things developing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we have adopted a lot of digital health technologies at Bascom Palmer, um, and you know we've, we've done it so well, I think. I'm really proud of everything that we've accomplished over the past year that we've been sort of sharing our best practices with all the other institutions, too, kind of worldwide. So we think this is you know critical to moving forward um, in this post-COVID era. era. We, it's not for COVID anymore. We're actually looking at the long, the long game now and uh, just you know changing all the ways we do things. Yeah, that's a great perspective. So um, you're familiar with this. Our ecosystem is based on connected devices feeding data to the cloud then a range of software applications that assist with, with workflow. How does that fit with your own vision for um, digital integration of digital technologies and, and techniques into, um, into healthcare? <laughs> Um, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because, you know, I wear an Apple Watch and, you know, I track everything, calories, steps, you know, uh, everything. And, you know, why not healthcare too? It just right. seems so obvious. I can track my food when I order Uber Eats, you know, but um, I can't really track my healthcare. And that just seems like the perfect next um, frontier for medicine. So I, I'm with you. I think that is critical. That's great. Yeah. Thanks. Now, um, you've had a opp an opportunity for kind of a sneak peek at some of our new <laughs> software applications. And I have to say, we're, we're not sort of giving details of those today. Um, but um, I think it would be great, if you didn't mind, to share your perceptions of those. What are your initial thoughts on um, you know, the relevance and, and whether you think we're kind of headed in the right direction? Yeah, you absolutely are. I mean, I, I haven't seen any other industry player who has kind of been that far ahead of the curve. Um, but it's so funny because when I was looking at all the new uh, innovations, what I was thinking to myself over and over again, what I said to the guys was, this is just so obvious. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, you're thinking of things that really should have been around years ago, but um, I, I'm, I'm glad that you're on the forefront of this new sort of mindset uh, of, of medicine and healthcare delivery. Yeah, that's great. Yes, very often the, the, the obvious is, is what's missed. So, <laughs> yes, you know, exactly. this is one of those areas where, you know, being called obvious is a compliment rather than <laughs> exactly. an insult. So that's good to hear. Now, um, again, step backwards. So you were really a, um, you've been a telemedicine advocate for quite some time. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned just now, um, it's sort of these aren't changes that are um, going backwards after, after COVID. Um, so COVID has been an accelerator. How, how is it really, um, how has COVID really changed things in your eyes in terms of elevating the relevance of digital programs and digital technologies? Yeah, um, it was a, I mean, it was obviously a very big driver for everyone. And um, it's because we're so busy all the time that we just kind of fall back into our old patterns. But when you don't have a choice and when patients don't have a choice but to adopt this technology, you see them step up and do it. And, you know, some of the things that uh, we've talked about before, you know, all the concerns about older patients maybe not being able to use an app or whatever, all that stuff is out the window now. I mean, now they've gotten used to it and, you know, they're always checking checking their MyChart or their, their apps or their, they're using their remote diagnostic tools right. and, and they, they won't go back even if we wanted to now. Right, right. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm sure that's true. Um, and to me as well, there are other things that have really come out. Um, and it wasn't just doctors and patients that couldn't get face to face. It was, you know, doctor to doctor. It was, you know, yes. um, physicians with, with colleagues, which I think has really changed the working practice as well. Yes. Um, have you seen that? Do you think yes. this sort of, you know, different ways of operating enabled by digital and different ways of collaborating um, enabled by digital? Do you feel that that's been accelerated too? Totally. Yeah. Um, and I think this is very near and dear to my heart um, because one of the favorite visits that we do is second opinion consults, and that's mm -hmm. worldwide second opinion consults. We are seeing patients from all over the world and giving them access to our tertiary level care from Bascom Palmer specialists they would never have had before we started down this route. Right. Um, and that's just something that, you know, every single time you can see, um, see someone who would have otherwise sold their car 
to come get a visit with us. And now instead, they're just using their own devices to have that kind of an opinion with us. It is the most powerful thing that you can imagine. Yeah, that's great. That's good to hear. Um, I mean, these are positive changes in healthcare, right? So kind of a positive from a very negative situation. Uh, what about artificial intelligence? Um, you know, we've talked about this many times before. You know, my, my, my feeling on this is that artificial intelligence is a powerful tool for upskilling. Of course. You know, for, for putting um, sort of, uh, you know, medical intelligence into the hands of different medical practitioners um, and medical support teams. Um, and that in itself can really change healthcare delivery as well. What, what is your perspective on sort of <laughs> AI and, and sort of how it's, uh, perhaps there are acceleration opportunities for that too? Yeah, no, of course we've seen that. Um, and and this, this old debate about, oh, well, they take over for doctors or which is better, you know, yeah. it's not even about that. It is about augmenting our existing tools. Right. You know, it is just another tool in our tool belt. And that's how I think about it. You know, this is, uh, we use AI all the time for online shopping or, you know, driving our cars. And we're not, you know, why are we still talking about that issue in healthcare? You know, it's just, again, it's just such an obvious play right. to help us do our jobs better. Yeah, that's good. No, I completely agree. And, and you know, to me at least, this sort of platform play, ecosystem play that we have, you know, one of the things that drives me along at least is this idea that, you know, you bring the data into one place, you connect everybody to that platform, you then have a great deployment vehicle for artificial intelligence, which is somewhat has been lacking before. I think the, you know, the science of AI has been there, um, but the means to deploy it at scale has somewhat been lacking. So. Um, I, mean, I, I assume you agree with that as an opportunity for us too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I like where you took that. You know, you have this really strong partnership with Microsoft where they're kind of handling the compliance stuff and the, mm -hmm. you know, the, all the back end nitty gritty infrastructure, yeah. you know, that you, you don't want to handle because you want to yeah. concentrate on the devices, right? And um, I think that's just a perfect marriage and uh, the perfect way to use your resources. That's great. That's yeah. good to hear too. So I've dominated the questions. <laughs> I know we've spoken a lot in the past, but um, is there anything that you um, wanted to um, ask or to, you feel we should be bringing out at this point as Zeiss? I mean, I'm just so, it's so refreshing that you're thinking along these lines. And, um, you know, I'm just wondering, what is, what is Zeiss's goal with all of this? You know, what are you after? Yeah, I, that's a really good question. I, mean, I, I think to me, um, I've said this to you before, you know, you do the right thing and good business follows. I feel like the right that. thing, <laughs> the right thing for us, in fact, for all industry players is really create a strong collaborative relationship with our customers. Um, and what that means, you know, we call it the solution mindset. It really means understanding the practical things that you and your patients and your colleagues face on a day to day basis. Um, and to me, digital is a, is a vehicle we can use to really kind of get inside those issues and those problems and to provide you with a different range of tools and capabilities um, that um, you know, wouldn't be there without somebody partnering. Um, so it's really, I'd say, that, that partnership and that solution mindset that we're really coming into this with. And um, you know, the, there's, there's definitely a, a belief that business will follow from this, but we're not leading with that. We're leading with this is the right thing to do. This is the right way for healthcare to operate, and um, we believe great things will will uh, will follow for hopefully for you and you know sort of our, our other customers and collaborators, and um, you know that that's the, that's really the end goal. It's amazing, yeah. It's it's a very um, it's a beautiful story, and that was a great answer. It's a win-win for every party involved. Great. Well, thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Oh, it was it. all my pleasure. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, you'll invite me out again. We'll definitely do that. We'll definitely do that.